Hello everyone and welcome to a really awesome game between Mikhail Tal and Nonaga Prindashvili and uh, I'm guessing you guys already know why I'm showing this game but I'm also showing it for a lot of different reasons and I want to just mention why is that. Uh, we, uh, we You've seen in the news uh, that uh, Gaprindashvili has sued Netflix uh, for, uh, well, um, basically uh, tarnishing her legacy, so, so to say, uh, because if you've seen The Queen's Gambit and you're familiar with the character of uh, Elizabeth Harmon or Beth Harmon, uh, then you know that, uh, well, uh, she's sort of uh, in this fictional world where there are all of the other chess players that are actually um, present in, in that day and age, uh, except for Bobby Fischer for some reason. Uh, but uh, uh, Nona Gaprindashvili also appears uh, in the in one of the episodes of The Queen's Gambit. It's uh, in the last episode and the, when the commentator is talking about... Um, uh, well, a, a lot of different things. Uh, Elizabeth Harmon just arrived in Russia uh, for uh, a brief moment. Uh, he mentions, and uh, these are the exact words from the Netflix uh, series. Uh, the only, and he's referring to Elizabeth Harmon. Uh, the only unusual thing about her really is her sex, and even that's not unique in Russia. He says there's Nona Gaprindashvili, but she's the female world champion, and she has never faced men, and uh, that could not be uh, further from the truth. And uh, uh, she sued Netflix for the sum of, I believe, uh, $5 million or even more than $5 million uh, as, uh, uh, well, just uh, just to give you an example, she won her uh, Grandmaster title uh, by uh, defeating some very, very strong players. For example, these are the standings of the Lone Pine Tournament where she, uh, after which she got her uh, Grandmaster title. And you can see that she won fourth place in a tournament where a lot of very strong Grandmasters uh, have played. Some of them you know, some of them you don't, uh, but okay, there, there are a lot of them, uh, a lot of players <laughs> in this tournament. Uh, but the, just some of them uh, that we have mentioned on this channel throughout uh, the years, uh, for example, there's Yasser Serevan, uh, there's uh, Samuel Reshevsky, there's uh, uh, Paul Benko, there's Walter Brown, there's uh, Larry Christianens, and there's William Lombardi, uh, and then you can see Nona Gaprindashvili in fourth place. So this is basically the tournament that, uh, where she uh, got her Grandmaster Norm, and uh, she's the first woman ever to do so. Uh, so she already was the Women's World Champion, but she's the first woman ever to receive the actual Grandmaster title, because you know, uh, in chess there are... Uh, there are general titles like uh, candidate master, fide master, international master, grandmaster, but there are also uh, women's titles, which are, of course, the women uh, candidate master, uh, women's fide master, women's international master, and women's grandmaster. So she is the uh, the absolute first who got the actual grandmaster title. And uh, that's something that... Um, uh, well, of course, anyone would, wouldn't would take it lightly if, if Netflix uh, said something about this. And it's uh, also very weird that uh, the Netflix TV series The Queen's Gambit is based uh, on a Walter Tevis book also called the, the Queen's Gambit. But the line in the book is much, much different from the line in the actual series. Uh, for example, in the book, uh, it says there was Nona Gaprindashvili, not up to the level of this tournament, but a player who had met all these Russian grandmasters many times before. And while I could uh, show you many of her games that, where she achieves uh, great victories, brilliant victories, where she defeats uh, other um, uh, grandmasters, I decided to show you this one. It's against my absolute favorite chess player of all times, Mikhail Tal, uh, and it's a game she loses. But uh, the story of this game will just show you the, the character of of uh, Nona Gaprindashvili and what uh, kind of a fighter she is uh, because as the story goes uh, before this uh, tournament uh Tal basically, uh, Tal offered her a draw, and we're going to discuss why after I show you the game. Uh, that she, And of course, she declined this, and uh, she said that she wants to fight. There's going to be a re really big struggle for the first place, and she wants to play an actual game against Misha. And while we are going to uh, discuss this a little bit more, uh, let's check out the game first. And uh, something that uh, also she said, it's translated from uh, Georgian. Uh, she says that they were trying to do this fictional character who was blazing the trail for other women. Uh, when in reality I had already blazed the trail and inspired the generations. It was an insulting experience. Uh, this is my entire life that has been crossed out uh, as though it is not important. And she's currently 80 years old and she's still competing and she's still playing in tournaments, of course, against both, um, uh, <laughs> both genders. Uh, but okay, let's check out the game and then we're going to discuss this a little bit more. So Tal has the white pieces and he opens the, uh, with E4. This was... Um, uh, played uh, 
uh, in Reykjavik, uh, and it was played, uh, well, uh, a few years after Tal already became world champion. He already lost his title to Botvinnik, uh, but uh, let's focus on the game now. So E4, we have E5, and uh, I was... Uh, I was thinking about whether to show you this game or her game against Boris Paski and uh, her game against Paski is even more impressive. Uh, but like I said, there's a reason I'm showing this one. We have knight to f3, knight to c6, we have bishop to b5 going for the Rui Lopez, a6, Nona goes for the Morphe's defense, bishop to a4 and now knight to f6. So this is something that we see pretty much every day. Uh, we have castles and now bishop to e7. We have rook to e1 and now b5, pushing the bishop back all the way to b3. Uh, we have d6 and now c3. So now you have the c2 square available for your bishop and also at any moment you can execute the, the central push with the d4. We have castles by Nona and now h3. Uh, we have knight to a5 going after the bishop, preparing c5 and the bishop to c2. And now, of course, c5. So this has been played many, many times. Nothing out of the ordinary here. Tal strikes in the center with the d4. And uh, uh, once again, this position has been reached so many times. Uh, Wesley So had it against Magnus Carlsen. Anand had it against uh, Vasily Ivanchuk. Kasparov had it against Ponomariov. Uh, Kasparov had it against Ivanchuk. Topalov had it against Ivanchuk. So uh, there's, there, there's no player, you know, who, who was... A, in the top of world chess that did not play this uh, so here uh, you might uh, go something like queen to c7 bishop to b7 or you could um, uh, reduce the tension in the center and then continue development which is what nona does so c captures on d4 c captures and queen to c7 putting pressure on the on the c file uh, bishop b7 rook to c8 with more pressure on the c file that's the plan and at some point this knight is probably coming to c4 so knight b to d2 Tal's going for the usual knight to f1 and then to e3 or g3, depending on what black plays. Bishop to b7 and now knight to f1. Uh, we have rook 8 to c8, putting pressure on this bishop here and bishop to b1. This is fairly common here uh, against uh, uh, such a setup in Rui Lopez to place your bishops uh, on, on b1 and c1. Nothing weird is happening here. And now... Uh, you might consider a move like e captures on d4 or d5, uh, simply to prevent white from playing, sorry, simply to prevent white from playing d5. But first she goes rook to f8. She wants to put more pressure on this pawn and you will later be able to play some like queen to b8, queen to a8, and then put even more pressure on the e4 pawn. And this is what Nona is playing for. So knight to g3, Tal adds another defender here, and now g6. Uh, so now the bishop can be shifted to f8 to g7. We have bishop to g5. Now the dark squares have been weakened. You want to play queen to d2. And now knight to c4. And uh, now comes b3. And it is uh, as of move 18 that this position has never been reached again. So let's see what happens here. Uh, so you have to move the knight. If you go to a3, which seems like a reasonably... A good move. Uh, for example, bishop to d3, you don't really have all that many ideas here with the knight. If you go knight to c2, yes, it seems nice. It kind of seems like white has to trade, uh, but just rook c1 and you blunder this knight. So, of course, you're not going to do that. So instead, Nona goes back, knight to b6, and now we have bishop to d3. Just continuing development, uh, Tal is preparing rook to c1. So knight b to d7, uh, and now rook to c1. So you, as you can see, the tension in the center has still not be, been resolved. No captures were made, and d5 still was not played. So the queen is attacked, we have queen back to d8. Uh, and now Tal trades on c8. Rook captures, queen captures, and now queen to d2, uh, joining the bishop on, uh, on the dark square diagonal. Uh, and now we have bishop to f8. So what do you play here? Uh, well, you could play something like d5, but uh, I, I, I think the reason Tal uh, refrained from playing d5 is that uh, even though positionally it makes sense, uh, Tal, uh, well, he, he's more in favor of an open game than a closed game, even if uh, it tends to give him a little bit of an advantage. So he goes back, bishop to b1, uh, and now comes... Uh, queen to a8, like we said, putting more pressure on this e4 pawn. So here, bishop to h6, the pawn is for the moment sufficiently defended by the knight, rook, and bishop, uh, and here, nona trades. We have bishop captures, queen captures, and now you don't have to worry about any knight to g5 ideas, the knight is covering h7, uh, so rook to e7. Uh, queen is coming to f8, and now nona will offer, offer a queen trade. Tal, of course, uh, as you know, will decline this, He's he was never much of a queen trader. We have rook to c1, Tal now puts the rook on the only open file on the board. He wants to bring the rook to c7. And now queen to f8. Nona offers a queen trade and Tal, of course, declines. Queen back to d2. And now, finally, we have d5. 
So uh, this d5 now uh, comes with a with a pawn sacrifice, but you have to you have to try something. You you could also try to just keep the tension, but Nona uh, is a fighter and she wants uh, the position to open up uh, even against a player like Tal. So knight captures an e5, knight captures an e5, and now d captures an e5. And now the problem is uh, you can't really go for rook captures an e5. If you play rook captures an e5, then you allow Tal this very dangerous expansion with uh, uh, f4 uh, attacking the rook. And once the rook moves e5 attacks the knight and now you don't really have a good option here you you're gonna have to play knight to e4 if you go knight back for example knight to d7 then rook to c7 and you're in big trouble here both the knight uh, and the bishop are attacked so you'd have to play something like knight to e4 and then after let's say bishop captures on e4 pawn captures you're gonna play queen to d4 and now there's no defending this pawn so tal would win a pawn here uh whether it's enough it's hard to say but it is a pawn and uh, he he, he was better on the clock as um, as the story goes. So after D captures on E5, uh, Nona goes for this knight captures on E5 idea, bishop captures on E5, uh, on E4, and now D captures on E4. And now queen to F4, guarding the E5 pawn uh, and preparing to capture on E4. We have queen to B8 now, putting pressure on the E5 pawn, and Tal plays rook to C5, defending this pawn. And now, uh, again, you have to decide how to continue here. Do you want to keep this pawn or do you want to lose this pawn? Uh, here, Nona decides to, to give up this pawn. Uh, you could defend it with f5. Uh, it uh, seems like a very nice pawn expansion here. Uh, of course, you can't capture e captures an f6 al passant because you blunder the queen here. So Tal would have to do something else. But it's, um, uh, well... Uh, the white king is very safe here and now the black king is kind of wide open and you don't really have uh, all that much to do with black. For example, we're going to show uh, a line knight to e2. Now we're going to move the queen and bring the knight into the game. For example, queen to d8, now preparing to trade rooks here, but also threatening to win the knight with um, uh, queen to d1 check. So let's say king h2 and now rook to c7. Uh, removing some of white's attackers, queen to c1, defending the rook, now let's say captures, captures, and king to f7, and you, we would get a position like this, uh, where white would definitely get the f4 square for his knight, uh, and then it's uh, completely crazy, for example, if g5, there's even e6 with check, king f6, and now uh, white, black is in a lot of trouble, queen to c3, check, king e7, and now queen to g7, check, and this is just so ugly, King to d6, and now let's say queen captures on b7. You trade bishop for a knight, pawn captures, and now let's say queen captures on a6. Check king to e7, uh, and queen captures on b5. You're going to capture on e6, and you would get this position where it's a uh, queen pawn endgame. Uh, Tal is up a pawn, but uh, black has this massive pawn structure here that can be pushed forward, I guess. So it's a uh, uh, complete madness here. But uh, with... Uh, Nona being low on time, of course, it's uh, a lot to calculate, but it's uh, it's a possibility, of course. F5 just defends the pawn, and then you take it from there. She decides to give up this pawn. She plays queen to d8, and now how do you continue? Well, Tal grabs the pawn. Knight captures on e4. Uh, we have bishop captures on e4, queen captures, and now f6. The pawn cannot capture. The queen is on e4. So queen to c2, now not allowing Nona to capture back, because if you capture back, then just rook here, and then you're in a lot of trouble, you lose the queen. So after queen to c2, we have queen to d4, uh, and what do you play here? Well, of course, uh, you first deliver the check, rook to c8, check, king f7, and now you capture the pawn on f6. And now this is another moment where Nona could have uh, gone for the easy way out. Uh, she she already refused a draw before the game. She wanted to play, she wanted to fight, but now she refuses another one, it would seem. Here, rook to e1, check, uh, and it's uh, hard to... Uh, do anything really with white. For example, king to h2, queen e5 check, you have to play g3, uh, or if you go f4, of course, just queen captures on f4, so g3, and now rook to e2, attacks the queen, threatens rook captures on f2, and now you don't really have all that much with white. You could just play rook to c7 check, rook to c8, rook to c7 check, rook to e8, and go for some sort of a perpetual, or you could go for this queen trade, and after captures, captures, you would capture on f6, now this is hanging, and this is hanging, so king g2, we have to defend our pawn, Nona would capture here, Tal would capture on h7, and you get this position where uh, Tal is up a pawn, but for example, rook a3, one pawn is not all that much in rook and pawn endgames, for example, rook to a7, and now b4, and this is very, very hard to... 
uh, uh, to play because at any point if this rook somehow activates you can just push the pawn create a pass pawn uh, and uh, well or, or if this uh, rook ever moves from the defense or, or or rather the attack of the a6 pawn you just capture this one so it's uh, uh, all in all should not be an, uh, uh, all that difficult but Nona uh, uh, declines this idea she goes for queen to a1 check instead king to h2 uh, and here uh, Tal already saw that Nona was uh, going low on time and uh, he didn't want to win on time so he allowed his time uh, to run out uh, not really but, but he he didn't push the clock and then Nona said if he does this one more time that she will resign the game right away and then Tal of course uh, had to play uh, so here we have queen captures on f6 grabbing that pawn and now rook to c6 by Tal attacking the queen and going after the a6 pawn we have queen to f4 check g3 and now queen to f3 uh, so now this is the position that Nona had in mind, uh, I guess going uh, uh, instead of that uh, drawish line that we discussed, uh, because now rook to e2 again could be deadly, but Tal finds rook captures on a6 and that this is not a problem. Now the problem with rook to e2 going for this seems crushing, but the black king is wide open. So queen to c7 check and there's no defense. King to g8, okay, you don't have rook to a8 because the queen covers the a8 square, uh, but you could easily play queen to c8 to check and now you don't really have anything if king to g7 then you play rook to a7 check and now if king to h6 there's queen to c1 check there's no defense against this uh, g5 now you go back rook to a6 check and then after the king moves you pick up the g5 pawn and now of course it's all over king to f8 rook to f6 with check you win the black queen and that's it you don't have anything to worry about so after queen to c8 check you couldn't really move the king you would have to block with the queen but now it's a much different end game we just trade queens captures captures play king to g2 now we're up two pawns and of course this will be easily winning for tal so after this rook captures on a6 nona can't go for rook to e2 he, she plays uh, king to g7 uh, the king will now be able to, to hide on h6 and then maybe you will be able to play rook to e2 but now Tal played queen to b2 check uh, and I believe it was in this position that nona's clock ran out uh, she ran out of time and then uh, she she resigned I do not have this exact same information maybe she resigned here but as she was um, uh, very much low on time it could also be that her time ran out but uh, whatever you decide to do uh, white is clearly much better here for example if you go king to g8 we can simply play rook to f6 and there is no more attack for black white is just up material uh, the game is still not over of course you have to play it but uh, you, you will no longer have any pressure on the f2 pawn the queen has to move you don't have time for rook to e2 uh, so there's that and if the king doesn't allow rook to f6 you could also play some like king to f7 uh, then we play queen to d2 so it's really not a problem and now Again, you can't continue. Rook to e2 runs into rook to e7 check. And after, let's say, rook back to e7, you just play queen to d4. You keep an eye on this uh, and you don't have a worry in the world. Of course, you're going to trade this. You don't mind going into queen and pawn and game. You're up two pawns. Uh, so, of course, it would be winning for Tal. Uh, but yeah, after queen to d2, uh, Nona resigned or her time ran out. I, 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 I do not have the information. I believe her time ran out, but could also be that she, she just resigned. Uh, but the, this is the game I wanted to show you. Like I said, even though I could have uh, shown you any game where she defeats a strong grandmaster, I decided to show you this one as uh, she, she was offered a draw before the game. She was offered a draw during the game. Tal tried to allow his time on the clock to run out. She did not allow it. She said, okay, you do it one more time. I'm going to resign. Uh, she wanted to fight Tal in his best. Uh, she wanted to, you know, uh, she, she, she didn't go uh, for any easy ways uh, out. And even though history might remember that... Um, uh, she, you know, got a draw against a uh, former world champion such as uh, the, the Great Magician. Uh, she refused, of course, and she wanted to fight. And uh, Tal also mentions this in his book, uh, Life and Games of, of Mikhail Tal. And I'm just going to read a very small part from the book. Uh, so here Tal says, uh, on this day, a telegram arrived from Moscow saying that Nona had been awarded the title of honored master of sport uh, of the USSR. And as a senior calling, uh, I arranged a small banquet uh, to, uh, to which uh, a number of the competitors were invited. Uh, the following day, uh, I was due to play Nona. Uh, I didn't think at the moment I had the right to play for a win. And so I said to the lady champion that I was not averse to agreeing to a draw. To my surprise, Nona displayed her character and said that in view of the close battle for first place, I was obliged to play only for a win. Uh, 
Uh, then I suggested her that she, sh she should name an opening which uh, she would like me to play. She agreed to this and naturally without any additional preparation I sat down at the board. I now felt more confident and even had the right to think of revenge. The point was that uh, a New Year lighting tournament had been held in Hastings and in the final of this uh, Nona had scored 3 out of 3 and I only 2 points. Uh, I gained my revenge uh, in Reykjavik, talking about this game that we've just seen, and in the course of play I was once more made aware of the Georgian ladies champion like character. Already upon down Nona got into time trouble but when not wishing to win on time uh, I forgot to press my clock on a couple of occasions, Nona said to me in hissing whisper, if you do that again, I'll resign straight away. Uh, taken from pages uh, 241 to 242 uh, of the Life and Games of Mikhail Tal by the, by the great Misha himself. Uh, so yeah, uh, once again, uh, I could have shown you any game where she defeats a strong player, but uh, really this uh, this game against uh, 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 Mikhail Tal shows her true character and why she is definitely a true champion. And, uh, you know, uh, maybe, uh, not maybe, definitely Netflix should have considered uh, not throwing in that line because it was not in the original work of... Uh, uh, Walter Tevis uh, and uh, they, they really changed it and uh, she got a reply from Netflix uh, Net the producer of the series um, uh, said that Netflix has only the utmost respect for Ms. Gaprindashvili uh, and her illustrious career but we believe this claim has no merit and will vigorously defend the case so we'll see what happens uh, with with this lawsuit and uh, what it will bring but uh, definitely it will uh, a lot of people will learn more about her and that it wasn't really the case. Uh, because one thing I noticed when I started making video uh, videos from the games of the Queen's Gambit played by Beth Harmon, uh, of course those games are all fabrication, but uh, the Queen's Gambit got so many people into chess that were never interested in chess. Uh, and, you know, I, I think I made three videos on uh, the games that she played in that series. Uh, all of them got over a million views. I think one video got maybe even five million views. I don't know. And... Uh, uh, a lot of people were amazed that uh, Beth Harmon was not a real character. They were they were they were devastated that she was not a real character because she inspired them so much. And then when they started googling about Beth Harmon, they were like, "Oh, she's a fictional character. Oh, oh, damn." And of course, it's uh, it's sad that uh, when you have a real character who definitely uh, paved the the way for other women, the the first woman ever to achieve the the actual title of Grandmaster, uh, is belittled like this. Maybe in a you know. Uh, in a Netflix TV series. So I'm not a lawyer, of course, I uh, do not know such things, but uh, I'm very much interested in your comments uh, and we'll definitely follow up on this uh, uh, after, you know, this is resolved, uh, maybe with a, with a, uh, a game where, where Nona defeats a, a strong grandmaster. Uh, but yeah, I felt like for this video, this game perfectly illustrates uh, Nona's character and why this was, uh, w well, at least was not cool from, from Netflix side. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. I uh, hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank John Dugdale, author fan faceoff, Antoine Bull, uh, Polak Shlomo, and Rui Kun Hong for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing uh, to check up on your wonderful suggestions, checking up on your, whatever else happening in the chess world, and uh, you know, just uh, do, doing what I usually do. Uh, so yeah, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of the day.